Today we're diving into something that a lot of you have asked about. How to migrate from VMware to Proxmox. And best of all, we're going to do it all for free using Veeam Community Edition. Wait, aren't there other tools that we could use for migration? Why would we choose Veeam for this? Well, we're going to discuss that. This method is super easy and works really well. So let's jump in and get started. First off, let's talk about Veeam Community Edition. Just as a note for full disclosure, this is not a paid video by Veeam or not sponsored in any way by them. I just want you to have the knowledge of all the options available out there to easily migrate your workloads if you're evacuating from VMware ESXi and you want to migrate to Proxmox. Now I've used Veeam for many, many years and it's a product that just works. If you don't already know, there is a free version of Veeam Backup and Replication called Veeam Community Edition and it gives you all of the powerful functionality of Veeam for the most part, for up to 10 workloads, AKA 10 virtual machines. Now this is perfect for home labs or small environments if you want to make the migration from VMware ESXi over to Proxmox. So with just the free edition, we can back up our VMware virtual machines and migrate them directly to Proxmox in a seamless process. And when you think about it, this is an enterprise grade tool that makes migration extremely painless and efficient. And Veeam's been doing that for years and years now, now with the added ability to target Proxmox. Why though use Veeam instead of the other migration methods that we've probably heard about, maybe even played around with recently with migrating from VMware ESXi over to Proxmox? There are certainly other ways to move from VMware to Proxmox, but many of them are cumbersome or they may have limitations. If you recall, Proxmox has recently introduced a native migration or import wizard in Proxmox 8.x, but in my testing, it can be slow and a bit problematic. You also can't point directly at VMware vCenter server as of yet. Snapshots as well on virtual machines and VMware can be a real problem as well for your migration process. For this migration process as well, you have to shut down your VM perform the import migration in Proxmox, and then power everything back on. And as you would note, this would require downtime. Now you can also manually copy over VMware disk, the VMDKs, and convert them to the Kimu disk format using command line tools. But again, this is time consuming and requires downtime, and it can also introduce errors into the process. Also, let's talk about Proxmox backup server or PBS. Why wouldn't we use PBS to migrate our VMware workloads? Well, PBS server is a Proxmox only solution. So in other words, it is great. Most likely what you may want to revert to as you get your workloads over to Proxmox for those Proxmox backups. However, it has no clue about VMware ESXi server. It wasn't designed for that. A tool like Veeam is multi-platform aware so that you can back up virtual machines from VMware ESXi. It also understands Proxmox as well as Hyper-V, as well as Nutanix, as well as vanilla KVM and other platforms so that we can take those backups from VMware ESXi and then restore those virtual machines over to that target environment. So again, PBS server is a fantastic solution. It's just not the right tool for thinking about using it in any way, shape, or form for migrating away from VMware ESXi. Now using Veeam simplifies everything. First of all, we can take backups of our ESXi hosts without taking anything down. Then we can restore virtual machines to Proxmox without affecting running VMs and VMware. Now sure, you would want to make sure that if it's a database server or something with a DB on it, you wanna make sure that you get everything quiesced, get a good snapshot of your data but you could leave that for those particular VMs if you need it. Starting in Veeam 12.2, Proxmox migrations are fully supported. And in fact, very straightforward, it just works. The migration workflow is what you would expect. Now let's talk about getting started. The steps to migrate from VMware to Proxmox using Veeam. Now, arguably, I think one of the first steps that you need to think about with any migration of VMware ESXi VMs over to Proxmox, no matter which tool that you use to do it, 
you have to decide what you're going to do about VMware tools. VMware tools can cause issues if it's installed when moving to Proxmox. However, you really have two choices. You can uninstall VMware tools before migrating, reboot your VM, and then run the migration. Or you can use a PowerShell script to cleanly remove VMware tools from Windows VMs after the migration. For Linux, you can just run a few commands to get rid of open VM tools either before or after the migration process. And those commands include commands like sudo apt remove purge open VM tools, sudo apt auto remove, and then a sudo reboot. Now, step two, run a full backup of VMware. One of the first things that I did in my environment on a host that I wanted to migrate all those workloads to Proxmox VE server was to run a full backup of my VMware ESXi host using Veeam. Now, I simply just created a monolithic job in Veeam as a backup job that pointed to the VMware ESXi host. And that way it just literally grabs all of the virtual machines that that host contains and is running. So just target the ESXi host that you want to migrate. Now the next step is before migration, make sure your Proxmox host is ready to go. That's going to consist of installing Proxmox VE server, running all updates as I would certainly recommend doing that, and then setting up your target storage, that is which storage are you going to house all of these VMs that you migrate. And you want to have all of those steps completed as that will set you up in a good place so you can add your Proxmox host to Veeam. Step four is exactly that. Add your Proxmox host to Veeam. Once Proxmox is installed, we need to add it to Veeam. So let's take a close look at that process to get Proxmox added into our Veeam Community Edition installation. And we're going to see just how easy it is to get things connected and ready for the migration. So here we're going to add the Proxmox server to our inventory. We're clicking inventory and then Proxmox VE. We're just going to enter the DNS name or IP address. Click next and select our credentials that we can connect to our Proxmox VE server. Click next, accept the SSH key. And here we're obtaining storage information from the server. And after this is successful, we click next. We're going to select snapshot storage that it can use. Click apply, and it's going to simply register the Proxmox VE server to our Veeam server. And here we're going to click finish. And it makes note that we need to add a PVE worker. And this is basically the local proxy that will reside on our PVE server that will do the heavy lifting of copying data. So we're naming it, we're choosing where we want to store the virtual machine files. And you can see the concurrent tasks. We're going to add a network configuration. I'm just choosing the default Linux bridge and DHCP. And everything looks good. We're just going to apply. And you notice it has the test the worker configuration. Now, as a note, this process will take quite a few minutes. And I'm going to speed up the video so that you can see just what steps are involved with this process. But it's going to deploy the virtual machine it's going to apply the network configuration. It's going to test that configuration to make sure that there are no network issues or VLAN issues where it can't establish connectivity. It will attempt to install updates on the PBE worker VM. So let's speed up the installation and then we'll see when it's successful. Okay, as you can see here, we have sped up the installation. So we are checking known repositories. The snapshot was created successfully. It's installing updates to the PVE worker node, and we should have those updates applied in just a couple of moments. And there we have it. We've got a successful installation of the PVE worker virtual machine. So at this point, we have our Proxmox VE server attached to our Veeam backup and replication server. Okay, very good. Simple enough. Step five now is the process of restoring VMware backups to Proxmox. This is the fun part actually getting your VMs over to Proxmox. Let's take a look at that process. What is involved to restore our VMware VMs in our Proxmox environment now that we have our Proxmox VE server added to Veeam Community Edition? 
Okay, so I'm going to show you just how easy it is to migrate from our VMware backups and our VMware ESXi host over to Proxmox using Veeam Community Edition. So this is super easy. And we've already walked through this, but we saw just how easy it is to add our Proxmox server to our Veeam environment. We've also got our Proxmox worker node that was provisioned as part of that process. So I'm going to navigate back over to home. And as you can see, I've expanded the backups disk node. So we see the backup for our VMware ESXi host and all of those VMs. So if I select a single VM or note, you can hold down your shift key and you can actually multi-select virtual machines for this restore process. For the purposes of this walkthrough, I'm just simply going to select a single VM. And notice we have all of these options at the top to export or restore our VM to a certain environment. So I'm just going to select Restore to Proxmox VE Entire VM. Click the button and this will launch the entire VM restore for a virtual machine. As already selected, we've got our Azure DevOps Express server that is in the virtual machines to restore. Now at this point, we could add a virtual machine, clicking the add button, we can select a specific restore point if we have multiple restore points on disk that we want to choose from. But at this point, I'm just simply selecting the restore point that I have. So I wanna click next, and this takes us to the restore mode of the wizard. Now, as you can see, the only option that is selected is restore to a new location or with different settings. Now, Veeam is smart enough to know that we are taking this backup from a VMware ESXi server and we are targeting a Proxmox VE server. So the only option we have is a new location or with different settings. That makes total sense. So we're just gonna select next. Here we've got the host that we need to select. As we can see, we've got the warning there. So I'm just gonna click the host button and then Veeam is going to present to us if we have multiple Proxmox hosts, we're going to see those here. I just have the single one in my Veeam inventory. So I'm just going to select PVE01, click OK and now we've got a host selected as the target. We can restore resource pools if we want to restore resource pools in which VMs were included when backup was created. And then also I'm going to just simply from this screen click next. Here we've got a couple of options that we need to select. If I click the Azure DevOps Express top node in our storage screen, and I'm gonna expand this just a little bit. If I select that, if you notice, when I do that, we get the storage button and disk type are enabled. So I'm going to select the storage button. This gives us the option to select which local storage or which storage that is attached to our PBE server that I want to target for this restore. So I'm gonna select the VM storage that we provisioned, click OK, and then also we can select the disk type. Now here, you've got three options, the raw disk type, the QCAL2, and then VMDK. So I'm gonna select QCAL2, and we're going to click OK. Now we've got our options set, let's click Next. Here on the name screen, very simple, this is just standard Veeam uh, workflow at this point. We could actually rename this virtual machine if we want it to be something different in our Proxmox inventory. However, I'm just going to leave it as is and click Next. Now we get to the network screen. Veeam understands that Currently, this machine in the backup was connected to a distributed virtual switch in the VMware environment called DPG servers. Target is unknown, so we don't really, it doesn't know which target for this restore. So what we can do is simply click here, we can click the network button, and the only network that I have currently provisioned for my PVE server is the default Linux bridge, which comes out of the installation. So I'm just going to uh, simply select the VMBR0, click OK. Now we have our target for the networking set. Now I can simply click Next. The restore reason, we can leave this blank, we can just simply click next. And then finally we make it to the summary screen. So here we can review, we've got our original name, new name, restore point that we're using, our target Proxmox virtual environment server, and then we've got our storage, 
set to VM storage and our networking to the default Linux bridge. And here we can select to power on the target VM after restoring. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select this checkbox and then simply hit finish. Now, when we hit finish, we're going to see Veeam kick off its normal, very familiar recovery process, restoring data. If you've done this across any type of environment that you have protected in Veeam, this is pretty standard Veeam stuff. As you note, it is preparing the PVE worker machine as that is the mechanism that it uses to both back up your data as well as restore the data. So that was part of that provisioning process. So it's powering on that virtual machine. It is getting it ready for the restore operation. And then once that is ready, we're going to see it actually start copying the data. Now I want to show you in Proxmox VE what we're currently seeing. We can see the PVE01 worker is powered on. And then also now we have a new virtual machine, our Azure DevOps Express machine that is already showing an inventory. So we can see that things are starting to work. We're, we're seeing the, the virtual machine has been created. So if we look in Veeam, we can see it's already down to the point of restoring this of the VM, Azure DevOps Express in the hot add mode. Everything is looking really good from that perspective. So all we have to do now is just wait a couple of minutes and our data will be restored. Okay, so just after a couple of minutes, we see that the restore process has finished successfully. It finalized the restore, restore is finished, and then it also shuts down the PVE worker virtual machine. If we hop back over to Proxmox, what we're gonna see is our PVE worker is indeed shut down. And now we have our Azure DevOps Express server is now booting up because if we remember, we checked the box to power on the virtual machine when the restore process finished successfully. So if we go over to the console, we're going to see our virtual machine is indeed booting. Now, what I did not do was uninstall VMware tools before this conversion process. So I'm going to have a little bit of cleanup to do just to get rid of VMware tools. And then I need to install the vert IO drivers and that will install the necessary drivers for the network, for the disk, and for everything to work smoothly. You can think of Vert.io as the VMware tools of the KVM world uh, in Proxmox VE server. That is it. That simple. VMware allows us to convert from our VMware ESXi environment over to Proxmox VE server. Now, are you looking to build a Proxmox home lab server in 2025? Check out my video here where I take a deep dive look into a Proxmox server build using the Minis Forum BD795M motherboard. This build turned out really fantastic and I'm loving this server in the home lab. Also check out the description for this video for links to the build components in the Proxmox server build for 2025. Well, that is it. Migrating from VMware to Proxmox using Veeam Community Edition is an easy and effective way to make the transition from VMware ESXi over to Proxmox if that is the direction that you're headed. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments if you've used Veeam or something else for this type of migration if you have another favorite method out there or one that's worked well for you that you would like to share in the comments. Well, thanks for watching. Do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.